Hey guys, how's it going? Happy Monday. Um, today I am going to attempt to shoot a video on one topic and be under 10 minutes. Do you think I'm up for the challenge? I think I'm up for the challenge. Also, I just finished my cup of coffee and I thought I would share that <laughs> I almost forced myself to get this cup out more than any other cup because for me, and that's probably the theme of this video and several videos, I really have to focus on this right now more than anything else. Um, I'm sharing with you guys everything um, that I'm going through with the bioidentical hormonal replacement treatment, um, with everything that I'm learning from my research and from my reading about, in particular, I mean, obviously the hormonal imbalance, um, what causes it, what treatments there are, what can complement the bioidenticals, but also specifically in my case, because this pertains even more so to my fitness goals is the fact that I'm dealing with both hypothyroidism and um, uh, insulin resistance. And <laughs> I read last night something that's really interesting. Um, I'll have to put a link to it if I can. But I had noticed in some of my last videos, um, and, and then I went and I looked in the mirror, I had noticed that there was this like strip of dark skin out of the blue on my neck. Can you guys see it? like it goes here and then here. And I kept thinking, is this some bizarre, weird, like aging thing? I mean, again, you guys, I am 46. I don't expect to be wrinkle free. I've never had plastic surgery or Botox yet. I'm thinking it might be time to start looking into that. Um, but anyway, I had noticed this and it was, it was disturbing me in my videos, but actually what I read last night is it's actually a, I don't wanna say a symptom, it's a condition of insulin resistance, uh, dark a dark patch of skin, they call it like a dark patch of velvety skin that appears on your neck, um, I believe also under your armpits. I'm gonna have to look and see if I have dark skin under my armpits as well. There's one other area where it shows up but it says it's most common on your neck when you have uh, insulin resistance and there's a two name um, word for it. The first, oh, I should have brought that in here, because with an A. Anyway, I'll put it up but I'm like, what in the world would cause you to have a strip of dark skin on your neck? It's telling you guys, like, this hormone situation is just so bizarre, but it's obviously intense. And I'm also glad I'm sharing this with you guys because I know so many of these symptoms are things that a lot of women would just attribute to, you know, getting older and that, you know, you just accept it, but it's not. From what I understand, I'm gonna have to look this up from reading this last night, it's not permanent. It should go away when your um, insulin is, is back and, and functioning correctly, which clearly mine is not there yet. Um, but what I wanted to talk to you guys about today was, you know, A, staying the course when it's probably the toughest time to stay the course. And that is gonna happen for all of us, whether you're dealing with what I'm dealing with, with all of this uh, you know, hormonal imbalance and, and the treatment and, and it not working as fast as you want it to. Maybe you don't have all of the issues that I have, the health issues that I have, and, and the severity of some of the health issues that I have. But um, we all, I'm sure, are gonna to get to a point in our fitness, health, and wellness journey where you kind of hit a wall, you, you're, you're moving along, and you're just, you're like, I'm moving along, I'm doing all the right things, I'm not seeing it. Um, am I jealous of a lot of you that I know you could uh, probably just, you know, tweak your diet, increase your cardio, decrease your cardio, increase your weight training, add another day, and you'd start to mix it up and see changes? I wouldn't. Um, for me, you know, I think that where I'm at right now, my mind is in a much better place. But I gotta tell you guys, it is the hardest thing for me right now to be working as hard as I am, to be more clean in my diet than I've ever been, more intense with my training, getting better literally every week, and I'm gonna show you guys that, um, and to have incidentally, the weight on the scale is the highest weight it has been in a couple of years. Now, let's, let me put a caveat there. The weight on the scale is the highest it's ever been, but yet for the first time ever, instead of me going, oh crap, you know, I'm getting fatter, oh crap, what I'm doing isn't working. Um, it's more of an ironic, weird thing for me to get on the scale and see that the weight is still high, 
higher instead of going down because I know, I know at this point it's about the fact that I am, I'm putting on a ton of muscle, I'm building a ton of muscle and the fat loss from the insulin resistance and hypothyroid situation, it just hasn't fallen into place yet. So that will happen and who knows you guys, honest to God, I, I don't care what the number on the scale says. Okay, um, if that means, you know, I've always had it in my head, like the, the skinniest or leanest I've ever been, and probably skinnier is a better term, uh, at 5'5 five five was 125. And that was right before I got married and right after I got married for a while, before the hormones started, you know, really getting messed around. But at that point when I was 5'5, five five, 125, and I really had not an ounce of muscle on me, that was more of a skinny fat. More people that were in my life were telling me, you're starting to look too skinny, your face is very drawn, and you know, I had like no butt, believe it or not. Um, and certainly then when I went through my divorce, you know, I just wasn't eating, and um, I think that was one of the first times I went off the pill. Of course, didn't put two and two together that being off the pill changed my body and allowed me to lean out. Um, never put those two together back then. But I remember just putting on my pants and looking in the mirror going, where did my ass go? And I've always had a booty, people. So, um, you know, in my head, I've always been shooting for that 5'5", 125. And I remember, you know, one trainer, I'm rolling my eyes, some of you know who I'm talking about, was like, I need to get you down to 113. That's crazy, okay, that's just wrong. I don't care if I weigh 150, 170, 140, 132, 125 at 5'5", five five. if I know that I'm at my healthiest, if I know that you know I'm, I'm at a great place with the body fat percentage, whatever, I really don't care what the scale says. It's just a kind of a frustrating thing for me right now um, because it doesn't represent right now where I want to be ideally. So what's happening is I'm gaining a ton of muscle. Um, I have lost, so my, my body fat percentage has gone down. Um, my weight on the scale has gone up, but everything is improving and it's showing that I'm gaining muscle, gaining lean muscle, I'm losing um, body fat slowly, but it still is like a mind screw when you see that number on the scale and you're a woman and you want to be losing weight, you want to be losing fat. I just have to stay the course. And I will tell you, it's just, for me, it, it's not as catastrophic as it was, as it would have been before, because now I understand. Number one, I can look at my body in the mirror and see that I am changing my shape. I have more muscle, I have more definition than I've ever had before. Um, so it's all looking good. I also know that that number on the scale is a result of, of muscle versus pigging out. Um, and eating bad food. I've been better with everything. In fact, let me just show you guys. One of the things, I've talked about this before, but I wanted to share it with you because I shared it on Instagram and Facebook and more people wrote to me about this silly little old school method of accountability I have with myself, but it works. You guys know, um, I've talked about this before, that I use a, a physical calendar. I put it up in my, um, uh, I almost said my weight training room, my laundry room, so that when I have finished my workout, I record my workouts when I'm finished. This is not where I plan my workouts in advance. I'm not that proactive. Um, I write down my workouts when I'm finished, and I write um, what I did for cardio, what I did for weight training. And as you guys know, the number one problem that I had, I say number one, um, the number one problem that I had the past year and a half with the injuries is being consistent in my weight training. I was always getting my cardio in, not getting my weight training. So um, that was one of my goals this year was to make sure I was getting weight training in. So I started to add, instead of what I used to always do, which is just use a regular marker to record workouts there, um, from far away, I wanted to be able to glance there and instead of going, okay, wait, what did I? Okay, that day I did this. I always record what I did and then I put a number of stars for both cardio and weights. Was it a five star workout? Was it a four star workout? So it's one to five stars. Um, five being like best thing I could have done. I couldn't have tried any harder. It was great. It was awesome. It was kick ass, etc. But you know, again, what I found is that I couldn't tell from far away 
did I get weight training in that day? So then I started adding with the Sharpie a little symbol. This, I have no idea why I did this, but I just put W with a circle around it and then I underlined that day. So I knew that that day I got weight training in. And as you can see in January, oh, I'm at just over 10 minutes. I was still getting, there's consistency in all of these months, right? But you can start to see January, not a lot of weight training. And as I look at my notes here, I was still dealing with back pain. February, a lot more weight training, right? And then there's some days that I'm off because of migraines. That was before I went out to Phoenix to see Dr. Riska. Uh, March is when I went out to see Dr. Riska. Um, I had to go to the um, gynecologist, I think that was for some testing before I went out there, blood work, blah, blah, blah. Um, so that improved. April was when I came back, I think, and I started my treatment. You see, you know, we've improved, but I certainly wasn't there. And, and that's the thing. This became, and it has become like a game with me where I'm like, okay, that's good, but look at that. Look at that big gaping, you know, area with no W's in it. May, um, I started off, but then I have, um, looks like May 6th, 7th, I had bad headaches. So, and, and that was still... Um, I'm trying to think. That was when I ended up having a, a meeting with Dr. Riska and we adjusted some of my medication um, because I was still getting headaches and very, very tired. All this stuff has to be tweaked. Look at June. You know how proud I am of that month? So end of May and June, you're looking at like the last, let's see, six, six one, two, three, four, five, seven weeks kicking butt. And yet, again, I'm telling you guys that on the scale, um, numbers not where I want to be but you know what it's bothering me less because I absolutely as the cup says I trust the process is it frustrating absolutely there's no question that it's frustrating but there's a difference because in my mind now I know if I would have gotten on the scale and had this situation before I would have doubted myself I would have thought I must be doing something wrong here's the thing I am not doing anything wrong. I am getting better every single week. I'm improving. Um, I, I trust the process. I'm eating better. So, you know, I know I'm not doing something wrong to cause the scale to go up. The scale is going up because I'm gaining some of this beautiful muscle. Hello. And I can see it. I can see that my body is changing for the better, even though, even though clearly I haven't fixed the insulin resistance and the hypothyroid. Um, the fat is not melting off my middle. It is still there. It is lessening, but it's going very slow. But I just, I'm aware of all these factors now. I'm being kinder to myself. And furthermore, most importantly, I'm accepting myself where I am right now. I just booked my vacation to go to Miami um, for 12 days. And you know what? A year or so ago, if I was in the mindset I was back then, I would have continued to say, oh, I can't go, I can't go to Miami. I don't like what I'm wearing, this isn't gonna work, you know, yada, 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 and, and I would have put it off. I'm accepting myself where I am. I'm allowing myself to have fun where I am. I'm not gonna put my life off anymore till I think I'm perfect. Um, I've done that for so many years and it's ridiculous. And guess what? It just adds to the stress, which adds to cortisol, which adds to all of the, you know, hormonal madness. All that stuff has to be changed. And so I guess I just want to encourage you guys, number one, if you're going through what I am with the, the hormonal imbalance stuff, keep the course, focus on other things, um, ignore, ignore the bad things. If you know you're doing all the right things, trust in that and trust the process. Um, and just keep going. Because as frustrating it is for me, um, I was thinking about this, like, what am I tempted to do? Am I tempted to throw in the towel and start picking out and not working out? No, I'm too proud of the progress I've made and I'm really enjoying the process. Do I miss little things like being able to have rice with my sushi for a little bit? Yeah, but is the bigger picture worth it for me? Absolutely. So I encourage you guys to, to keep the faith. I will continue to keep you posted. Keep you guys writing into me, asking your questions. I'm happy to see if I can refer you to a specialist in your area. Um, because again, don't guess with yourself. Get your blood work done, see a doctor. Um, so many of you, I think you're, you're like me, you're scared to see the results. Trust me, it's a game changer when you know what your results are and then you can work to fix it. Talk to you tomorrow.